Welcome to a podcast on the law and its impact on computing technology and business. This is Brian Gaff. I'm a senior member of the IEEE and partner at the McDermott Will and Emery Law Firm in Boston. The IEEE is presenting this podcast in conjunction with my column that appears each month in Computer Magazine, a publication of the IEEE's Computer Society. That column discusses legal issues relevant to people in the computer hardware, software, networking, and service businesses. The last podcast discussed the importance of prior art when patents are being applied for or litigated. This podcast will cover some of the intellectual property, or IP, issues surrounding three-dimensional printing, which is the topic of my October 2014 column in Computer Magazine. 3D printing has created quite a buzz recently. For those who are unfamiliar with this technology, it involves using a specialized printer, something like an inkjet printer, to deposit powders or polymers in a series of layers to build up a three-dimensional object. In essence, 3D printing is similar to additive manufacturing processes that have been around for several decades. What's different now is that the technology has become less expensive, to the point where many individual consumers can afford it. This will give hobbyists and home businesses sophisticated manufacturing capabilities. With the potential of 3D printing exploding in popularity, it makes sense to look at how IP law affects it. Let's start by considering what a 3D printer produces. Under some form of computer control, it produces a three-dimensional object that's described in a computer model. That computer model could have been generated based on artist sketches, the draftsperson entries into a computer workstation, or perhaps a 3D imaging scan of a pre-existing object. So you have several pieces of software, those being the application, the underlying operating system, and the model. You have the hardware, which is the printer itself. And you have the finished 3D object made from, for example, a powder or a polymer. In the United States, IP protection is in the form of patents, trademarks, copyrights, and trade secrets. One or more of those might be available for each of these components in the 3D printing ecosystem. Let's review what patents, trademarks, copyrights, and trade secrets protect, and how. Patents protect products or processes for about 20 years. In the 3D printing context, patents might protect the software used to control the printer, the chemical composition of the powder or polymer, the process of depositing the powder or polymer in layers, and the printer itself. The finished 3D object might be patentable as well, particularly if it's functional. And by that, I mean that the object performs a function, like a switch or a valve, for example. If the function is novel and legally non-obvious, it might be patentable. What if the object isn't functional or has non-functional aspects? For example, What if the object is a figurine? In that case, a design patent might be a good solution. A design patent protects the novel and legally non-obvious ornamental design of an item for about 14 years. What's covered cannot be functional. However, design patents can cover the shape or appearance of functional items. This was an issue in the recent Apple vs. Samsung lawsuit where certain Apple design patents covering the iPhone were litigated. Those design patents covered things like the shape of the iPhone and its rounded corners and the appearance of icons on the iPhone display. The appearance of an object can be protected by trademark law as well. This type of protection is called trade dress, and it covers things like shape and color. Some famous examples of this include the shape of the Coca-Cola bottle and its red color, and the iconic blue box that Tiffany uses. The goal of trade dress protection, and trademark law in general, is to protect consumers from being confused about the origin of an item. So, when someone sees a so-called Tiffany blue box, he or she can be assured that it's from Tiffany. Anyone else who marketed a Tiffany blue box without Tiffany's authorization might be liable for infringement. An object produced by a 3D printer might be eligible for this trade dress protection. Although this protection overlaps with the protection that design patents provide, trade dress protection can last indefinitely. 
If the object is destined to be sold and its distinctiveness needs to be protected, getting trade dress protection makes sense. Copyright protection is another possibility. Copyrights protect the expression of artistic ideas, so a copyright might be secured for the object as a so-called visual work. In addition, the software model that describes the object and application software that controls the printer might be copyrightable. Keep in mind, however, that copyright protection is designed to prevent the outright copying of the protected item. That might effectively prevent knockoffs of the printed object. However, if different software could be written that performs the necessary functions, having a copyright probably won't prevent that. Trade secrets are another form of IP protection. Trade secret protection usually applies to critical business information. Trade secrets are as good as long as they're kept secret. They could, in theory, last forever. On the other hand, any disclosure, even if it's inadvertent, will destroy the trade secret. In the 3D printing arena, a trade secret might involve the composition of the material that the printer uses to construct the object. That is, if the powder or polymer has a unique formulation that provides a competitive advantage, that formulation might be maintained as a trade secret. That's similar to what's arguably one of the most famous trade secrets, that being the formulation of Coca-Cola. Keep in mind that the end user of a 3D printer might run afoul of someone else's IP rights. For example, making copies of a copyrighted figurine and selling them might lead to a charge of infringement. Making a copy of a device that's patented without the patent owner's permission is infringement and could lead to litigation. So the message here is that it's a good idea to protect your IP that you create using 3D printing technology. But don't lose sight of the fact that while exploiting the capabilities of your 3D printer, you might infringe another's IP rights if you're not careful. I hope that you found this podcast helpful. Stay tuned for the next month's column in Computer Magazine. Until next time, this is Brian Gaff. Feel free to contact me via email at bgaff at mwe.com. Thank you.